Uh, I'm going to basically start off where Donald Mickey's talk ended yesterday with the uh, disruption that you, saw, you heard him speaking about where they'd split the departments between Hope Park Square and Forest Hill. I came up to Edinburgh in 72 to be a PhD student for Donald. I'd been working with him about two years before that with Jim Darren and, and, and Donald on graph diversity technology while I was at Lancaster University. So I was already interested in AI really by that time and I was trying to do a PhD. So what I thought I'd do was take you on a little photo tour of Edinburgh. Uh, some of these are contemporary photographs, some are historical photographs, and I'll put it in context. So it's mostly about AI homes at Edinburgh, but I hope those in the audience or on the computer science side will find uh, places they've been as well, so uh, you, you'll all see a little bit about what's going on. We've actually ended up as scattered as we've ever been. Just at the moment, we're all over town. Uh, so it's a good time to try to document some of where we've been for homes of Edinburgh AI. Uh, because, uh, as you know, in about a year's time, we're all going to move into either the Tower or into the Informatics Forum. And we, hopefully, for the first time, we'll achieve some of what Donald was trying to achieve when he was bullying people uh, in, the, in, in the 60s and the 70s. So Hope Park Square is where AI really started at Edinburgh, as far as most of us are aware of what was going on. This is where the experimental programming unit was. Uh, and this is where the Department of Machine Intelligence Perception was. And then the first AI department when it was at Forest Hill here. So I'm going to start off here. As I'm doing this, I'm going to say a little bit about what was going on with applications oriented and commercial work, because that's been my interest throughout my career. And I think you're hearing a lot of the people here who've been a part of uh, forming Edinburgh and its AI side, its, its computing side, all of them have an interest in seeing their stuff put into use. And that's definitely my interest. I'm interested in making sure this stuff, if it's created, is used. So I want to bring out a little bit about that. Uh, so this is a picture of Old Park Square. Uh, Basically, the Donald's depart, uh, offices were down in the bottom corner here. Uh, AII, which you'll, get, you'll hear a part of this story, is, is the Artificial Intelligence Applications Institute, which we formed in 83. Uh, that was first formed on the top floor, and then we moved down where Donald was. Uh, so this is also where AII started. So it, over two decades, really, there was uh, all of these groups being formed. This is the front side of Oak Park Square. I, I sh my PhD office was uh, the one on the right, and I shared it with uh, Aaron Sloman, some of you will probably know. So when Aaron had a year in Edinburgh, uh, which he, he still refers to a lot, it really f f formed the way he operates. He's a philosopher, uh, but he's acted as part of the AI community and a very, a very rich member of it, a very con contributing member uh, to that community over the years. And he still refers to the time he had a, a year in Edinburgh, as we did with a lot of our visitors. We had a lot of international visitors through, again, as Donald referred to. This is the front side, and I took this photograph uh, because if you look at the other photograph that Donald had, do I need to be close with it? That was the photo Donald showed yesterday of the PDP-7, was it, Donald? Yeah, uh, so that was it coming in. So you can see that uh, the building hasn't changed much. That, that other photograph was taken only about a year ago. Uh, so it's still, still very much like it is. It's even got a slightly better roof condition. Now, those, these folks were doing commercial work. They were forming businesses. They were trying to get this stuff out. Uh, this is an advert from Computer Weekly in 1973. Uh, I came across it when I was trying to find some stuff for Graham, actually, uh, 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 some of the old pop through compile listings. I had the 1900 listings until last November, unfortunately, when I threw them in the bin. Uh, I really wish I hadn't done that now. Um, but um, this is conversational software, which uh, Donald, uh, Jim Howe, and Andrew, Andrew Collin create, uh, created in, I think, 70, something like 71, I guess it would have been. But they were selling compilers. These were adverts in the, in the press at the time. This is one of the nicest pieces of graphic art I've seen from the 60s. I really like this piece of work. It's, it's almost like Thunderbird's Lady Penelope dress, isn't it? <laughs> uh, this, this is really, really nice. And, and look at the detail on this. I mean, the de look at the detail where they've got the square cutouts. This is, this is really, really nice. <laughs> and if you want to know where the informatic logo came from... <laughs> Okay, so this is a POP2 brochure from the time. Uh, I, I, I really like it. Unfortunately, that one, when I, I took this photograph for a, a talk down at the British Museum, and I still had the original of this from, from Robert Ray, uh, it was in the South Bridge building, the original of it, when the fire occurred. And more on that later. So let's go on to the second place, Bacool Place. Uh, by, by the time I came to Edinburgh in 72, we were already scattered across, across three locations. Bacool Place was where the theoretical psychology unit was, um, where Richard Gregory was. Uh, so a work was going on there, really the cognitive science side of Edinburgh. As you well know, that's still down there. Um, that's just a, a modern picture of the front end of the office. And there may be one inside. Ah, no, no, I didn't get one inside. 
Uh, so, so the work that was going on there was on the cognitive sciences side, language technology side, and the applications work was in the language technology group over a long period. Mark Moyens ran that group, uh, working with John and Moore and the others. And uh, that, that group ended up commercializing a, a lot of aspects of language technology and getting it out into use. And the groups there still do a lot of that. Forest Hill is the next one. Um, Forest Hill is where, the, where Freddie was. I mean, Freddie, Freddie too was described by my, uh, my dog yesterday. So I'm going to just go and show a picture of that. I think actually it's because these, these images are about six megabytes. <laughs> right. So I'm probably going forward about three now. Not quite sure why I'm not going forward. Somebody said this was Bluetooth. Do you think it is? Or do you think, it's, do you, think it, you need to be at this side? Um, so this is the front of Forest Hill. It's the drill hall. Um, there's, there's large spaces inside. It, it's been converted several times, or altered. It's now in use by the Institute for, for Adaptive <coughs> Neural Computation. Um, so the roboticists have come out of there. Uh, just showing you, that's the stairway, many of us will remember. On the right-hand side of that is where the robots were. And that's Freddie uh, back in the 70s, so a, a Donald, a, a, an image that Donald showed. And that's Freddie today, over, over in, the, uh, in the National uh, Museum of Scotland. So do go over and see it. It looks, uh, it looks, looks exactly like I remember it. So one of my planning systems actually controlled the Freddie robot, used for, for some of this assembly. Uh, we were doing that work with Robin Poppleston in 76. Um, I put JCMB in. Uh, I nearly forgot this one. I actually put it in this morning. Of course, the roboticists have gone down to JCMB. Many of you are working in JCMB. All the computer science side of, Ed of, uh, of what we've done in Edinburgh has been down there all the time. Uh, but it's only relatively recently that AI has really had a footprint there, and it's through the Institute for Perception, Action, and Behaviour, the robotics side, uh, which is now housed down at JCMB uh, prior to it coming back to the forum here. South Bridge, uh, we moved into South Bridge in 1985. This was the time of the Alvey program. Um, the university needed a lot more space for the people who were working in, in computing and in intelligent knowledge-based systems, as the Alvey program called it. Uh, so what was a department store, J uh, and R. Allen, and even when I came to Edinburgh in, in, in uh, 72, I seem to recall that was still open. Had a nice food hall under it, as I recall. Uh, is that right? Uh, yeah, I think it was just open at the time, although it, it, went, it had been, been left empty for a while when the university took it over in '85, converted it uh, for the offices that we all used. Um, so, but then that's just a picture looking down South Bridge, long focus shot. Uh, but uh, what happened there, as you, pro oh, sorry, no, the story's a little bit, bit off it. Um, so. 1985, we'd, we'd, it, it, just earlier in Hope Park Square, we'd formed Artificial Intelligence Applications Institute. That was 83-84. When, when the move took place to South Bridge, that's where AII moved. So I've just shown this, just an indication that work was going on in applications in this area. We were building the business. AI grew to about 25, 30 people around that time and had about another five visitors uh, because of the space uh, available. We also ran the Parallel Architectures Laboratory there. Uh, a lot of those machines later transferred into what became the EPCC. So we were, we were running a number of machines. We had a 128 transputer engine. Uh, we had a, a, a number of generic associated memory machines. And we had a VAX front end for these things and so on. We ran an ICL 2900 mainframe as a front end of that. We call that the Parallel Architectures Lab. It was run as a national facility, although it was internationally used. And uh, so the sequence symmetries we had were transferred across to EPCC as part of establishing that a year or two later. Uh, I put Donald's uh, Institute in, this was the Turing Institute over in Glasgow, because we've always seen that as a sibling uh, alongside AII. The two, of us, the two institutes worked together throughout the 80s and early 90s, uh, and we, we even bid for work together, we procured work together and, and worked together. They had a very large library, which uh, later when Turing Institute closed was repurchased, or was bought, bought by Edinburgh University and, and the, uh, joined with the AI library. Uh, this was the time the Alvey program, as I mentioned. Uh, all sorts of promotions were going on. This is why it was all growing. That's a, a picture of the motley crew uh, of Turing Institute in Edinburgh with Jim and myself and Donald Mickey there and uh, uh, Jack, Jack Donald, who was the, the business manager over at Turing Institute. Um, so, unfortunately, this is what happened. Uh, December 2002, we had the large fire in the, south, in, in the city centre. Uh, so, this, this part here, here, was where AII was. The library sat up here. This was my office. I do remember being uh, having dinner that night. We were watching the TV, and I could see the 16-foot flames coming out of my office. 
I'm saying to Margaret, I left my laptop at work. Huh? It's really okay now. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I'd left my Palm Pilot in as well that night. I don't normally do that. That was even worse. Um, this, oops. Uh, so anyway, this got so uh, disintegrated underneath that it all collapsed, actually, the whole thing. This was AII. So AII was that entire floor all the way along there. So we lost absolutely everything in AII at that time. This was where most of the department of AI was, Alan Bundy's group and so on around here. Uh, some of the uh, uh, speech technology people, luckily, had just moved out, so it wasn't quite so devastating on them. Um, just uh, a picture. Uh, you can see it really is a big collapse. This, this, this was just after the full collapse. So we were up in this window at one stage looking down, and you could see down three floors. So the 72 hours that burned turned a 45,000 volume Turing Institute and Edinburgh Library, biggest AI library in the world, all of AII, another department uh, underneath us, my entire office, all my artifacts over the years, lovely spacecraft models all gone. And basically that fused to seven inches of slag. So the whole of AI at Edinburgh became seven inches of slag, in, or this side of AI at Edinburgh, the computing and the policies and so on. Uh, so, this is where we moved, and we had a very, very good recovery. Uh, the, the School of Informatics, um, the, the university, absolutely behind what, what, what happened there. This was a, a, a really eye-opening uh, example of how people can pull together to do a business recovery. And we moved into a couple of floors on Appleton Tower. Uh, some of the people in the ERCC, who were on the training side, who I previously worked with in, in, in that group, uh, moved out over a weekend, basically, into other premises to give us space. We were recovered and we were teaching by the next Tuesday. Um, and it seemed a quick recovery, but in reality, it took a long time to recover after that. The business recovery was a long process, and I would say still going on now to, to an extent. But that's a picture you won't see again, uh, because there's a big, big building going on this side. So that picture was taken before all the building started on the floor. So this is where we are now. We're in Apple Tower. Uh, this is uh, it's, it's done up in its modern form. Uh, you've been in the, in the entranceway. And this is AII's level of Apple Tower and level four. We, we're going to move up shortly to level seven, uh, where there's going to be a commercialization center for all of the informatics work at Denver. So all the computing, uh, the cognitive science side, uh, what's happening with speckled computing, and so on. It's all coming together with what we're doing on the applied AI side. And AI will have an element of the suite that's going to be up there. I think, I think you got so that's the other picture. Now, of course, the outside of the tower is the ugly thing. We're hoping it will be planned one day. But just peeking around behind is the new building arising. And I think I've got a picture of that just taken from the corner. Uh, this was probably about six weeks ago, so it's, it's moving rapid, very rapidly now to, uh, to, to, to get this thing in place. That's a, uh, an image of what it looked like at conceptual stage. These are conceptual images. So all of that's where basically we're moving. So the two, two together, Avalon Tower, and this one will become the home of AI at Edinburgh as well as all of computing and informatics at Edinburgh, which is nice. But that's not, uh, not the end of the story. Uh, we're already moving into the next generation of the facilities for AI at Edinburgh. Uh, we're now in Second Life, and we're looking at a number of other virtual worlds. Uh, the University of Edinburgh has an organization called VIEW, the Virtual University of Edinburgh, and we have a number of islands in Second Life. AI is at an office in Second Life since last July, just about a year. And this is just a picture looking over the, at the Edinburgh Island. Uh, this is the AII office. This one here is the AII office. It was designed by some architects inside the world. And that's the, uh, current, the current informatics tower. Uh, and there's some other stuff around there. Um, this is another picture of, of, of the AI office. Uh, that's Donald Mickey giving a talk that he gave at the British Museum. Um, streamed into the office in Second Life, so we can do things like that. And I should say that that screen is now showing the Lytle uh, debate that Donald gave me the DVD of yesterday. It's currently showing on that screen. If anybody goes into Second Life, you know how to do it. And I, feel free to contact us if you don't know how to do it. We'll try to help you. There's a number of our avatars around. Uh, and this is me signing off from him <laughs> and from me. <laughs> So no, we're moving forward, and that's the, actually, if you go to the events uh, entry at AII's website, I've just temporarily put a link in to the, to the, to the version I've just put up. It, it will be a streamed version, I've just put it on Boombox, uh, I need to test that, but it should be a streamed version shortly, but there's at least an HTTP serve version, that, which is quite big, it's 161 megabytes, but it's just a little thumbnail, 320 by 240, if you're interested, please look at it. Okay, thank you.